Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video today we're going to be talking about secondary lesions. So if you didn't check out primary lesions, make sure you watch that video first because this is going to build on that information. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment down below in the comment section, I love reading them. And make sure you subscribe and really help out this channel. And then if you do like everything that we put up here, you can also check out ninjanerd.org. That's where all of our notes and illustrations for every lecture that we put up here is able for you guys to get and download and utilize when you are listening to these lectures. So I hope you like it, and let's get started with secondary lesions. So when we're talking about secondary lesions, what we're really talking about is a word that we're gonna use that's going to characterize our primary lesion. So remember and recall from the primary lesion video where we talked about how there was like a macule and a patch and how you can have a combination of both of those within the rash. So for secondary lesions, you can have a combination of these as well, and they are also going to be combined onto that primary lesion word. So I always think of secondary lesions as more a characteristic of the primary lesion, because that's really what they are. So when we talk about secondary lesions, we're talking about basically changes that are occurring with our primary. And any of these that are up here, there's 10 that I have up here depicted, um, can be a combination in our lesions, and they can be used, and they can also change. So when we're talking about these, these can occur from either like the natural healing process, infection, can also occur from any type of manipulation, like you're scratching, you're itching, you're picking things. And because of that, these are the secondary characteristics that can occur. So first, let's gonna, we're gonna look at the board here. We're just gonna see that we have the left side here, we're gonna talk about the decreased or damaged type of lesions. And then there's also the increased or augmented lesions. So when we're talking about decreased or damaged, I want you to think again about the layers of the skin, the epidermis, the dermis, the hypodermis, and how we're basically taking away or we're damaging those layers. So let's start off quick with the word erosion. So when we're talking about a secondary lesion erosion, we're talking about the loss of the top layer or the loss of the epidermis. And when we have that loss of the epidermis, you're gonna see here, we are not deep enough to go down into the dermis, so we're not having an issue with bleeding, but there will be some oozing, okay? So it's gonna be not bleeding, but it could be wet, it could be moist in there, like, but it's not gonna have any bleeding or blood coming out. So when we think about what a secondary lesion of erosion looks like, we can think of um, toxic epi epidermal necrolysis. So what we're looking at here in this picture is the top layer of the epidermis is kind of come off, it's slid off, and we're exposing the dermis underneath. You can see this a lot of other times in the skin um, in very different degrees of injury, but this is a really good depiction of what it looks like for erosion. That top layer is just gone, and now we have exposed layer underneath. Talking about losing the top layer and going underneath, going even deeper would be an ulcer. So here we have an ulcer. Um, the picture here, you can see it's deeper than the erosion, right? It's going down into the dermis a little bit. And remember from our pressure injuries video, injuries or ulcers can go very deep all the way down from the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis, right? So these are loss of dermis in varying degrees and can also go down into the hypodermis, right? And like we talked about with erosion, because this is deeper into the dermis, we are effect affecting that capillary bed underneath. So because we are affecting that, there can be bleeding here. So there might be a chance of bleeding, right? And this would be an example of like a pressure injury, right? Some type of um, ulcer that is occurring within the skin, it's going deep, it can be even deeper into the skin like this. And because of that, now we are having some breakdown, some exposure and some bleeding. Now we're gonna talk about fissure. Fissure is very similar to erosion and ulcer, but it is a very linear type of crack almost in the skin. So you can see here, it's a very um, denoted, very, very sharp kind of etching into the skin. So with fissures, we have the same thing. We can have a loss of dermis, right? There can be bleeding, there can be irritation. But when we're looking at this, you wanna think about um, people that talk about when their fingers are cracking or their knuckles are cracking, when you have contact dermatitis, um, you have some, a lot of irritation to the skin, a lot of hand eczema, and all of that can eventually cause cracking and dryness around those knuckles. And you'll see those fissures occur. And the fissures can occur anywhere. You can think of anal fissures as well, but what we're talking about here is a very superficial area. So we're thinking of things that are very much at the surface of the skin. So a fissure is just that very denoted, very deep, but very, very injury to the bottom of the skin, right? To the dermis and epidermis and hypodermis. 
Then we're going to talk about excoriation. So excoriation is when we have somebody who has basically been itching, right? So we have these very superficial markings that are kind of looking like scratches, right? So we have loss of the epidermis. It can actually go into the dermis depending on the person and how hard they are scratching or itching. But the problem with excoriation is that you can't necessarily say someone has excoriation until you do a little more history on the patient. So you can either one, witness the patient itching or scratching or rubbing the area, or two, you can ask them, have you been itching or have you been scratching at this area? If they say yes, then it's another indication to us, okay, this is a, a secondary lesion due to scratching and it's excoriation. So examples of that would be like a bug bite or hives or anything that's been irritating the skin. Now we start to go in and itch. And when we do, we cause these little marks and um, openings within the dermis and epidermis. So a patient then is again susceptible to having some other type of breakdown. And then the last thing that we're gonna talk about here is atrophy. When we talk about atrophy, it's very similar in the sense that the skin is getting thin, but the skin is still intact. So we wanna put that the skin is thinning but it is still intact. And that's important because when we start looking at older patients or patients that are having atrophy of the skin, you can actually see within this picture here how there's areas of a little more translucent, a little more ability to see through versus a patient's um, other side of the skin that still has very good connective tissue and hasn't atrophied or gone through atrophy as much as the other areas. So I tried to draw it on here because it's, it's kind of hard to draw translucent things on the board, but the ability for it to be thinner and then the ability for it to be more translucent. So that is all of the five secondary lesions that are decreased or damaged. Now let's talk about the five that are increased or augmented, meaning we're going to add to the layers instead of take away. All right, now let's talk about increased or augmented secondary lesions. When we talk about this, again, we're going to be adding to the surface or kind of building up onto the skin rather than losing epidermis or dermis. So for this, we're going to first talk about crust. And when we talk about crust, we're basically talking about some sort of drainage from the area that is drying, right? So when we say drainage, we can say things like blood or pus or any type of other wound drainage that is essentially dried, right? And when it dries at the area, we are then gonna get this crust. And that crust can be indicative of a lot of different things, but what we wanna understand is that that crust laying on the skin can also cause further issues for the surrounding skin, the peri skin. So we wanna make sure we're keeping an eye on that crust, noting how much is there, what it looks like, and then we're also going to be able to decipher further what kind of issue this patient might be having. So it could be things like impintigo, it could be um, drying just because it's a scab, so we really don't know, and it's just a further uh, denotion that we can investigate later. Moving on to scale, when we talk about scale, we're talking about just basically flecks of skin, right? So we have skin that is trying to shed, but instead it's having an issue of shedding and it's starting to build up. So we can say that these flakes of skin and they're basically trying to shed. They're trying to shed and they're building up. So because of that, we're gonna get this scaly looking appearance and we can think of things like dandruff, we can think of things like psoriasis where we have this buildup or this scaly appearance of the skin and you can see that here in this video. And we wanna take note of that because as that morphology or the lesion possibly changes, then we can have some other issues going on as well. So scaling is just the flakes of skin that are trying to shed off and aren't having a great uh, a job doing that. Moving on to scar. When we talk about scar, we're basically talking about uh, surgical incision or some type of injury to the skin that has gone to the dermis or deeper. As it does that, because it's gone into the dermis or deeper, there is fibrous connective tissue that is trying to heal in that area. As that fibrous connective tissue tries to heal, there, it, it makes a scar. So initially it'll be dark and then it can be a little pinky red and then over time it can heal and actually be very, very pale, right? And actually look lighter than the surrounding skin. So scar is fibrous connective tissue from a injury that is either dermis or deeper, okay? So because of that, we're gonna have this buildup 
of this extra tissue and because of that then we're going to get this different coloring in the skin but it eventually over time will become flat right so it eventually will be flat and it'll be lighter in color which is different than a keloid so a keloid is basically when we get hypertrophied skin so let's put that word down hypertrophied And what happens is these cells all of a sudden are getting bigger, they're getting darker, and they're getting lumpier. So keloid kind of pushes out of the skin, and it takes a long time, if it even ever does, go away. So this hypertrophy type of keloid causes this darkening, this browning of the skin. It's very obvious to see. And in this picture here, you can see the area of some of the scars around, they're nice and flat, they look lighter, and then there's a keloid. And the keloid is very different from a scar. You can see it there. It's darker, it's popping out more, and it's just very obvious. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about is lichenification. Lichenification are these skin furrows that you can see here. It's this up and down, really, really tight looking, right? Looks like this, basically, on the skin. So when we're looking at the top, we can kind of see all these little, these little furrows. And this is basically a rougher skin, right? Rougher. It also can be a little thicker. But what we're looking at is because of that, the patient's going to have an area that is maybe had been rubbed over time or scratched a lot over time. And because of that, that skin has now been able to have an issue where, or have the potential to get rougher and thicker, meaning it's gonna withstand more things. So because of that, we are now having some issues with these furrows and this rougher skin. So that could be an example of like a dermatitis that we have over time that has built up, furrowed, and made itself rougher and thicker in order to withstand all of that constant manipulation. So that is it, Ninja Nerds. That is our video on secondary lesions. And remember, this is an additive to primary lesions. So we use these words as adjectives or descriptors with our primary lesions in order to make a full picture of what's going on with the patient. So I hope this made sense. I hope you liked it. Make sure to subscribe. And as always, until next time.